Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we are going to get our try to get our 275 gallon automatic chicken bell water hooked up. So uh, come join us. Well, typically for chicken waters, we use our uh, bell waters. Uh, have um, probably have five of these. I got them when we were running our broilers. We use them in the chicken tractors. Uh, I think I first saw these used at uh, Joel Salatin's place, Polyface Farms. They were using that on their uh, on their setups or the broilers, and really liked it. I thought it's pretty simple. It allows you to to uh, dispense water and not have to carry water daily. You don't have to clean it out as much. Blah blah blah. Uh, this is a Plasson Bell Water. I think another company named Craig maybe makes one. I, I have both. Really like the Plasson. Um, I don't have any affiliate links or anything with them or any type of agreement, but I've uh, been impressed with it. It's, it's a little bit less expensive. In fact, I think the Craig Bell Water they had to drop the price. To be competitive with this because this came in about twenty dollars cheaper at one point so um, those of you who don't know simple concept this is a weighted ballast it's actually just full of water it has a hook on it so this hook you hang it from something it's the thing it has to be suspended bell slides over top of it you can kind of see there's a little spring action there there's a spring inside here so what happens as water feeds in through the hose cascades down the outside of the bell and fills the trough well, as that trough fills, of course, it gets heavier. And as that weights down, it shuts off the water. So basically, it's kind of like a reverse uh, toilet type of thing. The weight brings it down versus a float floating it up. Uh, but the weight brings it down and shuts it off. And that's what we've been using forever. I'm, in fact, right now, with the chickens down in the greenhouse, I just have a five-gallon bucket suspended higher than the bell. Pour water in a five-gallon bucket. And with, uh, I think we have about 40 chickens right now with those 40 chickens. That five-gallon bucket lasts me about uh, two days. So every other day I have to top it off. So right now it's August. Here where we are in West Virginia in August time, there's about a 45-day window where our, our streams dry up. Um, sometimes we'll have water, sometimes they won't. Right now they've got just a little bit of water in them. Uh, not enough that I can effectively go down to the stream and bucket up a five-gallon bucket of water and bring it over. So what I normally do is have my rain catchment. You can see here I've got a 60 gallon olive drum, olive barrel, that I was just catching rain off of. And I would just dip my bucket down into that and carry it down. I'm about uh, 150 feet from the, uh, from the greenhouse where the chickens are. So in the mornings, every other morning, bucket, bucket full of water, carry it down, or actually <laughs> drive with the side-by-side -side door open, hang it with my arm hanging out like that, carry it down there and fill it up. Again, no big deal. But what we wanted to do is, there are times where this actually goes dry, where we don't have enough rain to fill this up this time of year. So I took my food grade IBC tote, set it up here, put it up on some blocks, uh, catching rain. In fact, we had so much rain the other night, or just enough rain the other night, we filled this up completely in one evening, which was awesome. And um, I wanted to even get more because we were expecting another rainstorm the following night. And I thought, man, I need to do something with that. So I actually just siphoned it down using the magic of gravity i just siphoned it down to that ibc tote so you can't really tell from here but that tote's completely full this one's empty this one's completely full and my plan was if if this one filled back up again then we'd do the same thing here so that way you know these things are 275 gallon tanks so the um, plan would be to have um, what roughly 800 and some gallons there 825 gallons if i'm doing the math in my head properly um, so that was the plan, uh, but we haven't had um, enough rain to fill this up yet, but uh, so I've been using a little bit. You can kind of see right now it's about, um, what, a third full. So at one point the plan was just to let this fill up from the rain, and instead of you know, hooking up a hose or anything elaborate to it, I was just going to put one of my submergible pumps down in there. This is one of those little trash pumps. I think this is actually a Harbor Freight pump. Don't get me started. Um, put it down in there and go, but ironically, the the housing here is the right diameter to fit down in it, but with the extra motor or the outlet, and I guess, yeah, that's the outlet vein here, it uh, it won't fit. And I hate to start cutting on my IBC totes. I mean, I could. I could cut a slot in the lid and slide it down in there and probably not lose much. And I just hate to cut on those things. These food grade ones are they're a little expensive. About 100 bucks is what I paid for the food grade here locally. So, um, so that was plan A, and that didn't work. Um, looked at some other things. Obviously, you can get some pumps that 
that have the, the hoses you can drop in, the little siphons, and you, know, you can run them all 12 volts, you can run it off 110. Obviously here at the shop we've got 110. Looking at that, but to stay away from Harbor Freight and get something, because I've sworn off buying stuff from Harbor Freight anymore, um, to get something like that, it was about 100 bucks, 129 I think when I looked at Tractor Supply, when I looked at Granger and some of those things, about 100 to $130. I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, it's, you know, I can't really justify that right now uh, as far as an expense just for water in the chickens, because here in couple months that setup will be different anyway so anyway so uh, looking at what I can do um, instead of, of using a pump and electricity to move that so many of you may know that IBC totes have a threaded attachment you know, their output here their the little valve and a nozzle for output is um, it's kind of unique to them I don't know some of you guys may know the whole plumbing specifications better than I do, um, but it's not something you're going to go to the hardware store and buy an adapter to to choke that down. Uh, the thread's different, the size is odd, uh, but you know, through the magic of Amazon and other online sources, you can find these adapters people have made that you can screw it right onto the IBC tote and it's already threaded for garden hose size. The, pro <laughs> the part that bugs me though is these turkeys are like 30 bucks and you know if you need one for every IBC tote I've got three totes just right here and that's almost a hundred bucks by the time you factor in tax so you all may know where you can get a source of those cheaper if you do comment below and um, we'll uh, we'll share that with everybody I appreciate appreciate anybody having another source so right now what I'm actually doing I've got just a little short garden hose I think this is a eight foot or ten foot hose and uh, I uh, I'm just kind of staying a little bit slope. The IBC totes leveled right against the workshop and right against our walk-in freezer. And then the chicken coop, of course, is a little lower elevation. Everything kind of you know, kind of slopes off that way. So I can stand here with a bucket, have the bucket basically where the camera is, and I can fill the bucket in the morning, no big deal. Don't have to dip, don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. I just crack a little valve here, voila. So what I'd like to do to make this process even simpler is just plumb the IBC tote directly to the bellwater. Again, you can see we're 150 feet maybe. So 150 feet of water hose isn't a huge deal. And I do have gravity working in my favor. It all goes downhill. So by the time we go 100 feet, 150 feet that way, dropping maybe four or five feet in elevation, it picks up what, um, four PSI? I don't remember the math, one PSI, whatever. Gravity feeds enough. It's one of those deals where uh, We'll get enough water down there and fill the bell. The issue that I have, of course, is the adapter. Going from garden hose down to the quarter inch hose uh, that you need for the, uh, the bell water. So we've got, we've got a fix for that, we think. Well, so the first issue I have to address is <laughs> repairing my garden hose. Somebody, who will remain nameless, um, ran over the garden hose the other day with a lawnmower. These are one of my spare hoses here, so we'll, we had to get a repair kit. So we're going to fix that first, and then we'll be ready to uh, make some adaptions here. Okay, so um, interestingly enough as well, again, if I'd have gone to the interwebs, I may have found a better solution. But um, what I found is, of course, this is a three-quarter inch hose male so I've got a three-quarter inch to a half inch unfortunately I couldn't find a three-quarter inch all the way down to a quarter inch um, I thought I saw one of those turkeys somewhere before but I could not find it um, again so we'll just go with what we've got so three-quarter to half inch it does have a gasket in there I think we'll be good there I can tighten all this up. And then from a half inch to three eighths, like so. We'll put some tape on there. And then from a three eighths to our quarter inch barbed attachment. This looks like a old spray nozzle. <laughs> so that should do it. And of course um, what we do with the bellwater, the bellwater has this type of black hose 
that, uh, that she used and here in my pocket. So this end, of course, I can find the end. One end goes there, crimps down on there. Um, this screws onto the outlet or the inlet of the water, of the bell water, like so. Those will go on there. So that's how that should all go. All right, the uh, water is working fine. If you're wondering, hey, it looks later in the evening. <laughs> My folks came to visit, so uh, uh, I had to cut off our uh, experiment here and, and visit with them. But um, in the time that I've uh, left it alone, it's been uh, several hours, no leaks, no uh, nothing's overflowing, nothing's running out. The chickens have already been using it. See, we got a little chicken backwash in there. Woo. Um, but that's going to work. So that's, um, that's going to supply quite a bit of water for them. In fact, it should be technically unlimited. So in theory, this really should be an unlimited water supply. The, the 275 gallons the IBC tote holds, uh, the chickens right now go through um, what, two and a half gallons a day. I said I had to fill it up uh, every two days. So two and a half gallons, um, what's that's 200 some days. No, <laughs> that's 100 plus days. Whew, math. Um, so yeah, 100 plus days worth of water, and that's if we never get any rain again. Well, West Virginia, we don't go 100 days without water, that's for sure. Um, so just the catchment on this side of the roof, because all, that's all I'm getting is just this side of our, of our, wor our workshop, which is a 24 by 32. Um, I think it's a 4 over 12 slope. I don't remember. I built it 20 years ago, so I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, just, just that side of the roof catches that much water, fills up this tote. So uh, a real heavy rainstorm would get this thing pretty much full, um, two typical rainstorms, and it tops it off. So it's a great, great source of water for us. So technically, unlimited water supply uh, until obviously we hit cold weather. And once, once we get freezing temperatures, then of course, all that will have to change.